everyone. Uh, my name is Anna. I'm the CEO of Liquid Gold Concept. And today I wanted to show to you our brand new set of products. They're called Breast Health Training Tools. Uh, what they are in a nutshell are um, these breasts um, that are painted to represent different things that can present on the breast itself, on the nipple, or on the areola. We realized pretty quickly with our lactation simulators that they're, um, we can't include everything on them, otherwise it would just be a cornucopia of different pathologies and conditions. So we wanted to make sure that phys physicians, nurses, students, um, and lactation consultants especially uh, know um, how to think critically about different conditions that can present commonly or uncommonly on the breast. So I just wanted to demonstrate a couple of different um, breast health training tools that we have. For example, this one right here, uh, is an example of various malignant presentations on the breast itself. So looking at the nipple, the first thing you might notice is that it's retracted. You see from the side, it's kind of being pushed, uh, pulled inward, uh, potentially by uh, sort of breast cancer. Uh, so for your students, what you would do is you say, okay, well, let's talk about the nipple anatomy, the fact that the areola is asymmetric. Um, is there an underlying um, lobular carcinoma. Oh, have you noticed that there's this um, red discoloration of breast tissue on the side? If you look closely at the texture, you can see that it kind of looks like orange peel skin or um, the orange peel itself. So this is a condition known as poderand, which is French for um, skin of the orange. Um, and this is a telltale sign of some sort of inflammatory process that is going on. Interestingly, in bre breast cancer, especially inflammatory breast cancer, it will present like this, plaque-like, um, and very flame thing. It's a very rare kind of cancer, um, but it can also cause some nipple retraction as well. In um, healthy moms who are just a few days postpartum, they can also get this kind of uh, red um, swollen edematous tissue from postpartum engorgement. Uh, sometimes because they have too much, too many um, fluids given during the C-section potentially, uh, or just it could be an inflammatory mastitic kind of process. So um, there's really a variety of different clinical scenarios you can start to think about with just this one um, breast. Uh, of course, you're probably noticing these different spots on the breast itself. Here you can see um, it looks like a mole, but also have your students think about, is this an accessory breast, uh, is this accessory nipple, is this uh, potentially some sort of underlying um, cutaneous manifestation of a breast cancer, especially with something like this, you can see the asymmetry, the discoloration, um, you can ask uh, questions of your patient, has uh, been changing in size or in shape over the last few months or years, um, and really have your students start thinking about the difference between birthmark versus normal or abnormal moles, or again, the cutaneous manifestation of the underlying pathology. So you can see we already spent a few minutes just talking about this one uh, past and all the different clinical scenarios you can uh, think about with just uh, one training tool. Here I have a different one. Uh, notice the rash on this breast. Uh, the distribution of the rash is very um, special. Uh, for the most part, uh, when students look at this, they need to think about, okay, first of all, uh, what is the patient presenting with? Likely this would be a very painful um, rash, oozing rash. And uh, the key word here is painful. So you can see this, the distribution of the rash is very particular. It's not all over the breast. Um, and likely in this case, this could be a herpes zoster infection, but also think about drug eruptions or um, any kind of bacterial infection. So really the differential diagnosis for this um, can also, this also, re also requires quite a bit of critical thinking. Here's a really interesting um, breast. You can see here, uh, close up, it looks like the skin is kind of flaking. There's some um, purple discoloration of the breast tissue, and there's actually a, a case that I'll post in the description that we took this, we modeled this breast after. For a very long time, the woman um, who actually had a breast that looked like this was treated for Paget's disease, which is a type of breast cancer. Uh, but at the end of the day, it turned out that she just had contact dermatitis. So again, with a breast like this, um, the, some of the secondary findings that you can have your students think about is how small the areola is. Um, a lot of the times I'll have practitioners come to me and ask, what do I do with um, my, this uh, patient? She has a very small areola. How do I help her with hand expression? And you know, areolas and nipples come in all shapes and sizes very rare that something that's too small or too big is actually abnormal and uh, will impinge the lactation process. So again, having um, 
a tool like this can really make you think outside of the box about your differential diagnosis and make sure that your students are aware of different um, presentations that can happen, not just on the breast, but just on the skin in general, right? Contact dermatitis can happen anywhere. Uh, melanoma can happen anywhere or foster um, along the dermatome anywhere. So these are just a few examples of uh, our breast health training tools. In the follow-up videos, I'll be showing you um, all the different um, tools that we've made so far. Uh, what's great about us being at ILCA this week uh, in Portland is that this is our limited edition set of nipples uh, or breast health training tools and we're selling each one for $75 and in the fall we'll be launching a whole set of uh, comprehensive training tools of across the age spectrum of conditions that can happen to the breast, across the lactation spectrum, um, malignancies, infectious disease, autoimmune presentations, um, and of course representing nipple and areola in different shapes and sizes to help people think about, you know, the, the fact that there's no one perfect shape or size. Uh, human beings come in all uh, skin colors, all shapes and sizes, and it's important to think about what's um, what normal variation looks like. Well, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, email us or visit our website. Uh, you can reach us directly at info at liquidgoldconcept.com or visit our website www.liquidgoldconcept.com. If you want to buy any of these, um, just reach out to our sales uh, director, Sam. Her email is sales at liquidgoldconcept.com. Thanks.